Um, the Fabric program is a program financed by the German government, implementing uh, implemented on behalf of the German government in six countries in Asia with a goal to foster uh, knowledge exchange and sharing good practices among the region with regards to sustainable <coughs> development in the textile and garment industry. Um, we know that one, the textile industry is one of the most heavy polluting industries and chemicals play a key role in that. That's why we have set up this series as on the webinars to introduce new solutions and provide yeah, the evidence and good practices on using green chemistry. What we have been facing or we are always facing with is when we talk about green chemistry to producer, the one of the first reject, reaction is, oh, they cost more. For me as a producer, I have to pay more. And today we would like to, we hope to hear that's not true because it's not that easy. It's very complex if you want to make your production more sustainable. In the last week, we have heard already about that making textile and garment production more sustainable we need new solutions we have to consider already at the design the whole life cycle and how to make how to reduce the harm to environment and how make it more easier for recovering recycle as well products at the end and for that we also need more transparency and we need more capacity means more knowledge about what is available how to use it and how can we make it better and that's why i'm very happy to have today chemical manufacturer today in the webinar to present good practices to give very practical examples with the implication on the cost for the producer because at the end it's at the end, it's all about cost for manufacturer who has to make a calculation. Yeah, um, what does it mean for me as a producer if I buy and I'm going for greener chemistries? So I'm very looking much forward to get the examples from today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gundolf Klein from GIZ Fabric, and you have heard we are going to hear good practices for manufacturers. I'm going to share my screen for a second and just want to give you an idea what's ahead of us. And so you just heard Gundolf and now I'm giving you a few introductions into the house rules and how you can engage. Then this will be followed by three presentations of 15 minutes by manufacturers and then we have one factory, one user representative sharing his perspective. And this will be then followed at the end with Q&A and then Mr. Gundolf will wrap up the webinar with some key messages and we give an outlook for the final one that will take place next week at the same time. So who are the people joining us? I will introduce them later more thoroughly, but we have representatives from CHG Germany and Switzerland. We have people coming from Akroma, Pakistan. We have, now let's move. Uh, we have our representative from Daistar Germany and from GMS Composite Limited from Bangladesh. And how can you engage? Um, it's uh, pretty futile if you raise your virtual hand as a participant. We would like uh, actually to ensure that you make heavy use of the chat functions. So the mics are muted at all times. And as you have probably already noticed, the webinar is being recorded for documentation purposes. And so if you want to engage, you will use the chat box. There is a little button for chat and you can write questions and comments into the chat. We also will use one time the well-known application Mentimeter at the very end. There will be a link so we can hear your feedback. But how does it work? So if you have a question, you open the chat and you write your question to, and you should mention to whom you address this question so that we actually later can uh, forward this question to the right person life and if you feel that another participant has 
provided a very good question. You are interested in the answers too. So you can actually go on the comment or question and you can upvote it by putting a thumbs up or hard on it. So this will give us an indication as moderators that this question is of higher importance or higher relevance for some other people. So please upvote your questions as much as you do. And do not hesitate to ask the questions at the beginning already. We keep track on them and um, so that we actually make sure that we can address as many questions in this webinar as possible. And again, we are interested also in your thoughts, in your comments, so do not hold back. So let's make it as engaging as possible. OK, so um, what we are do going to do now is going straight into our presentations. We want to maximize the time and we are going to start actually with a presentation by CHT and we have with us Mr. Christian Baggi. He's actually the head of application filed field dyeing auxiliaries in CHT Germany. He is a textile engineer by training and currently responsible for the global product portfolio technical advice and marketing technical customer and application support as well as R&D of dyeing auxiliaries at CHT Group. He brings 30 years of experience to the table. He is also joined today by Mr. Klaus-Dieter Maurer, who is the head of technical service dye staffs of CHT Switzerland, and to, together they will be available to answer any questions addressed to them at the end of all the presentations. So. With this, I hand over for the next 15 minutes to Mr. Christian Baggi. Thank you very much, Mr. Joost. Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, uh, Mr. Gundolf, uh, for the invitation for the CHT to uh, this uh, webinar. So I would uh, quickly uh, start and jump into the topic, uh, not to losing so much time on the uh, presentation. So we would like to give you some information about our BISO responsible concept, which is uh, containing several procedures and uh, chemicals, auxiliaries and uh, dyes for saving resources, water, time and energy. So we start here with the BISO responsible concept, which has the name uh, for success, which is uh, the CHD best solution for dyeing of cellulose materials. And uh, I would like to give you some more details about it. So what is the idea behind the BISO responsible concept? So this is absolutely a rethinking of manufacturing procedures, processes, and uh, we empower you to save water, energy and CO2. So this is our best solution and uh, saving resources uh, in the textile procedures. So what is inside and what are the advantages of that? So we have sustainable optimizations of our of your procedures. We have possibilities, ecological savings, minimal consumptions of water and energy. So these are key strengthening sustainability strategy of each company. So looking more in detail of this uh, saving concept to save our planet. So it's also a perfect addition to the uh, new fiber materials using recycled materials, for example, and polyester and polyamide, of course. And uh, it's uh, aligned with uh, supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So, of course, you have also some USP for communicated product and uh, POS. So, some more details about uh, the procedures. This is a small overview about uh, procedures which we are offering uh, to customers to save water, uh, time and energy. So uh, the overview goes over polyester, uh, the dyeing of with our time boost procedure. So we're looking into low temperature bleaching for polyester elastan materials. For cotton or cellulose, we're offering the four success, which we go a little bit more in detail uh, in the, uh, let's say, later uh, slides. We're looking, uh, giving some uh, information about uh, polyester cotton dyeing with the speed package, but these are just uh, short and quick information about it. And last but not least, some ideas about polyamide dyeing, how you can shorten the procedures as well in uh, these procedures. So we have short, more deeper details about uh, the four success. So we have here with four success, some innovative sustainable process for discontinuous dyeing procedure of cellulosic materials. This is uh, suitable for all kind of uh, discontinuous machines like jets, package dyeing and jiggers. And uh, 
we have included here four flexible modules adjustable for your individual requirements, which are necessary for dyeing from light to dark shades. And uh, main focus, and uh, all of you know that the most savings can be uh, realized by dyeing some very dark shades, by reducing the soaping time and uh, all the rinsing uh, at the end of the dyeing procedure. And of course, also in, in bleaching, there's some uh, additional saving concept. So here you see the four modules which are included in this system. You see our bleaching system, which gives you the opportunity to uh, have a flexible bleaching procedure, depending a little bit on the quality or on the shade you need. You can uh, vary the bleaching temperature from 80 up to 110 degrees. Uh, the second component in uh, this fork success, uh, we have our Sarabit MIP, which allows you to do a short pre-wash for very dark shades. If you have a good cotton quality, you can do a pre-scouring and uh, go straight into the dyeing procedure. The third component, which is uh, uh, the hard component for the dyeing process, are our dyes here. You see uh, we have some uh, special dyeing uh, dyes which can uh, be applied with a very high fixation rate and later on soaped uh, with uh, temperatures about uh, 60 degrees. And last but not least in this four success concept we have our Cote Blanc SEL which allows you to uh, do the soaping uh, with temperatures coming from 60 up to 98 degrees which is a normal procedure and here you can achieve and realize a lot of savings. On the right side, you see possible savings, maximum savings uh, in uh, regard to water, time and energy. So we really, uh, let's say, had some uh, practical uh, trials and uh, selling this concept also very good in the countries. So, and uh, I will give you some more information about uh, some practical trials in Pakistan and uh, uh, on two uh, substrates, we have uh, dyed some um, knitwear and some towels. And uh, there are some really uh, bulk examples where I would like to show you one, first of all, the procedure, which you can see here on the graph. And uh, we dyed two shades here. This was uh, with the Betz Active Go dyes. 100% tricot material and a black shade. And you see we did here a pre-bleaching of the material with uh, the Vario bleach at 80 degrees. And uh, the following uh, procedure is completely uh, finalized uh, with only 60 degrees. That means rinsing after bleaching, neutralization, the dyeing procedure, and uh, the soaping can be realized for this black shade at uh, 60 degrees. You see here also the examples. If we uh, look in such a dark shade, it's normally in conventional procedures realized uh, with up to 10 uh, rinsing baths after dyeing. And you see here we could finalize this black shade with around about uh, six baths, which is after fixation and customer is doing some safety procedure to remove the material out of the machine. So overall, we have used uh, seven baths uh, for this uh, black shade. The uh, similar case we have on a uh, navy shade, also on this trico material, did also a comparable procedure, also bleaching 80 degrees, and rest of the steps are uh, in the range of 60 degrees, including soaping. And we could finalize it as well here, the procedure with round about uh, six baths, uh, including uh, the fixation procedure. So having some figures to uh, have a short idea how it is uh, compared with customer procedure and our for success. You can see in process time we have around about 20% uh, saving. The water uh, in these two procedures uh, summarized, we have around about 30% uh, water saving in this, coming from 55 liters per kilo uh, down to around about 40. The steam consumption was also reduced uh, drastically, uh, in our opinion, if you see the 98 degrees uh, soaping or uh, high temperature bleaching consumes a lot of uh, steam in this process. And also energy uh, in terms of uh, shortening the procedures like rinsing afterwards is saving also uh, some electricity. So overall, a nice saving potential for uh, dyeing these dark shades. So we have a good opportunity to uh, do this uh, knitwear material. 
Second case is comparable with the first one, just to show that uh, it's working on uh, other substrate or other, how you can say, uh, material like towels. Towel is also very difficult because it is keeping a lot of uh, liquid later on and it has uh, to be washed or rinsed uh, in, in a very good way to realize the fastness results on uh, the dyeing afterwards. You see here also we did some uh, dyeing with our go dyes on this towel material, comparable procedure like uh, before, doing some 80 degrees bleaching and finalization uh, with uh, the complete process around about 60 degrees. Finished also this heavy towels, uh, finally with round about six bath with fixing. And you see if we remove the fabric, there is no bleeding of the material afterwards. And also fastness results, which are taken from uh, this uh, trial at the customer is showing some uh, good wash perspiration fastness and uh, you see also the crocking is acceptable for such kind of uh, towel material. The same with the navy shade on this towel, uh, we can easily see a reduction of uh, rinsing afterwards, bleaching as mentioned before, 80 degrees and 16, uh, 60 dyeing and soaping and finalization of this procedure was being uh, finalized with five baths. And it's also a very nice uh, cut down of uh, procedure, which customers normally doing at also around about eight to 10 baths after uh, the dyeing procedure. Here you see once again, as uh, the customer is doing already some uh, shorter uh, procedure, as well as the water consumption is not so high on this machine, uh, we could uh, realize a water saving of around about 20%. But as well, you see steam consumption as we cut down procedure, uh, soaping and uh, rinsing from around about eight to 10 baths down to uh, five to six ones. So this is a short calculation as uh, Mr. Gundolf mentioned before that custom is always looking into chemistry or dyes which are maybe more expensive at the final procedure. So uh, we would like to give some calculation if it's maybe a little bit more expensive because uh, if you have such kind of chemicals or auxiliaries, they need some special certifications to follow, for example, cradle to cradle or any other certifications. That uh, is also some costs with which we have to invest into the products. But finally, if you look at the end of the procedure and how much water you can save and how much money you can save in such kind of processes, uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, it's been paid back and uh, there will be a, a nice uh, saving for the customer, which we can invest maybe in equipment or in, uh, let's say, very nice auxiliaries and chemicals and giving you some sustainable procedures. The calculations are based on some uh, results or figures coming from Europe, of course. Some uh, of customers in Bangladesh or Pakistan may say, okay, our treatment is much uh, cheaper, much more cheaper as compared to the European treatment. But finally, if you calculate the water and the treatment of water, which you have to release into nature uh, at the end of the day, it will come to this uh, amount of money, uh, which you can invest really in such a sustainable process. Okay, that's a short overview about uh, for success. Uh, some more informations and some few words about some further uh, saving procedures which uh, CHT is offering to the textile industry. Uh, one of them are our speed package procedure where we offer the customer to a combina combined uh, dyeing of polyester and cellulose where we don't have some uh, intermediate uh, reductive cleaning for polyester materials or we can combine them using some special dyes like our Bemacron HPLTD dyes, uh, some uh, saponifiable uh, dyes, which don't need some additional uh, reductive cleaning in between. And combined with our four success procedure, we can realize also the water saving in reactive dyeing followed by polyester dyeing. I don't want to go more in detail if you are really interested in uh, this water saving concept like uh, our speed package, so we are here to answer questions and also you have the opportunity to contact us how to realize this uh, saving procedure. A further one is our time boost. This is focused on very rapid uh, heat up for uh, the polyester dyeing, uh, which can also save a lot of time and uh, 
give you the opportunity to realize some shorter procedures and uh, making some more uh, efficiency with your actual uh, energy resources. The third uh, opportunity which I want to offer you is uh, our polyamide dyeing, which is called shortcut. So here we have also the option to combine dyeing and uh, fixing procedure into one bath. This is uh, mainly for procedures in uh, very dark shades, which can also lead to a very nice uh, saving of water if you realize the procedure in your manufacturing plant. Okay, some information about the uh, mentioned dyes before. Uh, these are our Bemacron HPLTD dyes. This is our range for a very high level of uh, wash fastness. These are alkaline saponif uh, saponifiable dispersed dyes. We ha have a good experience in the field of sportswear where we offering this, especially if you look into uh, blends with elastan, which sometimes requires some lower dyeing temperatures to prevent elasticity of material. So we have uh, excellent sublimation fastness on these dyes, and we can give uh, the opportunity or the option to dye this uh, dye stuffs at 120 degrees which is also a very good saving with the full color build up and uh, color yield uh, on this uh, polyester uh, substrates. Combined with this and talking about some green chemistry, we offering uh, to this polyester dyeing procedure our bioleveler, which has the name Sarabiti S300. It has uh, the, great the great advantage that it is a uh, uh, biological degradable dispersing leveling agent, which can be used for polyester dyeing procedures. It has the option to combine processes like pre-washing and dyeing in one step, which helps again to optimize the uh, polyester dyeing. We can realize good fastness by, uh, let's say, distributing the dyes uh, tightly to the substrate, and it fulfills the highest standards of sustainability by offering also the MHC for cradle to cradle. And the last uh, product which I would like to introduce you is our Revlogin, which is a biological degradable uh, reducing agent, which can be used for the cleaning of polyester materials after polyester dyeing. Uh, the great advantages of this is also on uh, renewable uh, materials, on some, uh, how you can say, it has no uh, odor by using it, as compared to the conventional hydrosulfide, which has been used for the cleaning of polyester materials. It's based on the renewable uh, raw materials as well, and we have a good dispersing and a very good cleaning effect as compared to hydrosulfide. So this was a short insight from, uh, let's say, CHG group regarding our sustainable concepts and our green chemistry. So we are happy to support in regard to saving time, water and energy for uh, our customers and colleagues in the textile world. So we are really open and ready with our Be So Responsible concept to support you to save this uh, very precious resources. So thank you very much. That's from my time. I hope I'm quite in time and uh, giving some more room for uh, the colleagues which are following me. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and wish you good success by saving the resources. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Christian Baji. Yes, you're very much on time. Thank you so much. And I already see a couple of questions in the chat, so we definitely will come back to you and Mr. Maurer in, in due time. So without further ado, I would like to continue in our series of presentation. And the next presentation is called the Acroma Way to Sustainable World. And we have with us in this webinar, Dr. Ashad Mehmood. He's the Head of Business Development and Product Stewardship of Acroma Pakistan. He holds a PhD in textile chemistry from the University of Manchester. And he currently leads a team of analytical chemists in a state-of-the-art application laboratory. And with his team, he ensures that all supplies from the two Acroma Pakistan production sites meet the standards and man mandatory eco compliance. So we are very happy to have you with us, Dr. Ashat. So the next 15 minutes are yours.
and you have to unmute yourself, sir. Oh, sorry. Thank you so much for the introduction and for inviting me for this on this very excellent forum. Just to make sure, can you see my slides? Yes, we can see the slides. Right. Right. But unfortunately, I can't see my own slide. Let me see. OK, OK. So how Arcroma is contributing to our, our green solutions? Arcroma redefines his approach to our internal and the external uh, markets through a way of Arcroma with to a sustainable world to make sure the way we operate, the way we communicate, the way we behave, it all are consistent. Basically, the Arcroma way to a sustainable world attribute to our three main pillars, the safe, efficient and enhanced. We are uh, we're taking all these three parameters throughout our all operations, our productions, our research to make sure we are producing dyes and chemicals the same sustainable way and also the consumer, uh, the textile industry, our customers, they are also comes more and more sustainable. Our approach is because we believe that we touch and color people's life every day, everywhere. That is why at Chroma, we continuously challenge the status quo in the deep belief that we can make our industry more sustainable. And how we can make it more sustainable? This is the way we operate our the Chroma way to a sustainable world the safe, efficient, and enhanced. Let me share with you all how it is our nature to make sure that we are sustainable, the customer is sustainable, and end of the day, the benefiting the whole, uh, whole our planet, our community, and our generations to come. I have selected a few uh, case studies. Just let me brief you what exactly our trauma way is. When we, when we say the Atoma way operates like a safe, the safe mean it's our nature to protect, to protect our people, our planet, and the solutions we offer to the industry, they are safe to use, the products they are safe to use, they are safe to release, and also the final articles that are produced by using the Atoma way, they are safe to wear. Then the efficient, it's our nature to rethink the sustainable manufacturing to, to make sure the processes that have minimum resource utilization and have a maximum productions, both in our plants and also in the textile industry. And the third pillar is the enhanced. Enhanced is, is our nature to add another level of the functionalities to the value addition chains. The initial effects, functionalities, aesthetics that give additional values by uh, applications of a sustainable ways. So in this, the Artoma way, how it works, so our Artoma offers its collections. That's the sustainable collections that ensures the this collection is uh, more safe and is able to produce more sustainable products, the final articles. Uh, Dr. Ashit, Dr. Ashit, uh, we are uh, seeing the same slide. Right, I'm sorry. So, which slide you are? In which four icons are placed? Our Chroma way to sustainable world. Sustainability, it's our nature. So, it is a, shows the same slide. So, how about now? It has not moved for me yet, but. I think if if that is some PDF, you need to share it again. OK, let me try. I'm sorry. So is that right now? Yes, it, it is the same slide, but links are not actually leading to some page. Uh, okay. It remains on the same slide. Right. So you are not able to see my, my links? Yes, yes. Just 
still not? No, I think actually uh, when opened, you need to reshare your screen. Showing that uh, link. Because you're sharing only the pre presentation, Mr. Uh, Mahmoud, so that means it will not change the, the screen. You only show the, the PowerPoint. So does you it work now? Yeah. You have okay. to choose a different window, but um, but better so you go ahead, uh, Dr. Ashad, because. So can you see my screen right now? Are you still on the same screen? You are still on the presentation, uh, sustainability over nature and the four round links. OK, maybe then uh, let me see if I can open the other slides too. When you press share, you have to use a different window which shows the website you want to share or the, the different picture you want to share. Okay. So now can see yes. the Arcroma way. Yeah. So this is what I'm sorry I was explaining about Arcroma way, how it works. Let me now go through it quickly because we have already wasted a bit of time. So the safe meaning, I already mentioned that it means to protect the people, planet, it, the product is safe to use, safe to release, and the safe to wear. Uh, efficient mean to rethink about the most sustainable manufacturing, not only in our chroma while producing the product, but also at the manufacturing side when the textile industry is using these products. So they can minimize the resources and maximize the, the product productivity. The enhanced mean. Apart from this safe and efficiency, we also had some additional effects to the final article when we produced by the Arcroma way. The Arcroma way we offer to collections, like a sustainable collections. It contains the product safe and also uh, give you a more sustainable processes to utilize and to produce the final articles. Then when we the enhanced collections, the products already safe with a number of certifications, but it also gives additional effects like functionalities and aesthetics to give additional value to the supply chain and helping consumers to achieve their goals for a life enhanced. By combining the safe efficient and safe enhanced, we have a ultimate collections that can and which contains all the features, all the uh, elements that we offer throughout our promo bay. Let me give you another example of our solutions. I'm sorry, since this is not working, so I have to go share again. Just uh, let me go to a quickly on a sustainable effluent treatment, a case study. Uh, this just gives you an example of our Roma vision, how we are taking care, how we are ensuring, and how serious we are about the sustainability to save our resources. Uh, the product, our production site at Arcroma Jamsoro in Pakistan where we are using, we are producing all the dyes and chemicals and the production is about 50,000 tons per annum. This, this side is, as we can see here, this on the, on the bank of the Indus River. And we are taking millions of liters of water every year to, to run this site. Then, to, as per our sustainability values, and to ensure the product we are producing are the sustainable we would to save up millions of liters of water we develop a sustainable effluent treated plant at our at our site at Jamshoro. so now with the installment of this plant we are saving 80 percent of the water every year and now with this water we are helping uh, we are using this water to help our communities that are living around our plants so this plant is basically a uh, closed loop system. It's a basically a tertiary plant. At the end of the day, after the RO, 
the uh, the sludge that we got it we incinerate that sludge and this sludge also then finally used in the to make our bricks and this bricks are also are used for our uh, services in our communities as a csr services so basically it's a closed loop system uh, even being on the bank of our indus river every year we are saving millions of liters of water so with this installment of this water the dyes we are producing every year the uh, every kilo of dyes we are using around a six liter of the water so any site which don't have such a facility available so they are using like a 30 liters per kg of the dyes so before this plant we can see that how much water saving it's like a 24 liter per kg of the dyes we are saving our water similarly on the if we talk about the chemicals before this facility, we are using like a seven liter of the water per, to produce per kg of the chemicals, but now it's been reduced to a 5.6 liter, uh, 1.4 liter to produce one kg of chemicals. So this is how our production side, the value, uh, the, the value chain for our industry, we make it a more sustainable uh, to save the waters. So it was recognized worldwide in one of the uh, in, uh, in one of the event where it, all the uh, industry was invited who have taken a big uh, development to save our water, to conserve the water. Arkoma Pakistan was also chosen on the top six ship industries who have taken a big initiatives to save the water. And it was recognized by the Global Water Intelligence in Paris, and it was awarded with the Corporate Water, Water Stewardship Award. So this was how we are making sure to save our resources. Let me go through our another examples. A one way sustainability services. Can you see my slide? We are still seeing the certificate. Right. And sorry. We have only a few minutes left, Dr. Ashad, so. And let me go through quickly. OK, let me uh, brief you uh, without a slide, I think. Then our chroma pro, uh, provided a one way sustainability services. Basically, the one way is our tool. It's been recognized by the blue sign, adopted by the blue sign. So this tool helps the textile industry to, uh, to save their resources. It helps the industry how they can make their processes more sustainable. So how it works that we take the collection of data, we put in this tool, it tools give you a finger, uh, all statistics that how much water you can uh, you are using, how what are your carbon footprint, what are your energy and the chemicals. Then it also gives you a suggest suggestions based on optimized processes uh, based on system solutions offered by the Alproma. If you switch to your conventional process to our uh, system solutions offered by Alproma, so then it gives you a final value that how you can save up uh, what your resources like a water, energy, and even the chemicals, and also your carbon footprint. By reducing all these resources, you achieve a better result than the, your existing conventional processes. And let me take the final example. Let's see if I can share the slides of that tool. It's a bit more important. Right, so it's about a system solutions. And I mentioned that we offer a system solutions through our, our Chroma way. So instead of offering a product that we produce at our plants across the world, we offer our solutions. So basically these solutions helps the industry to make their process more sustainable with the same, uh, with the same finishes and even the optimized finishes in their final articles. Let me take on examples. Can you see my slide still now? Next. 
The ARF colors is one of the examples that are offered in the system solutions. So ARF colors are based uh, on bio based product. Instead of using uh, fossil fuels, we, we use uh, uh, bio bases is produced from the from the uh, nut shells and all uh, the remaining parts of the that are not usable in the industry or in the food industry. We use uh, that waste and produce the earth colors that are uh, natural colors, bio based. So this is one of the uh, support to the to make our uh, supply chain more sustainable. Then if we talk about the, the denim industry at Jamstor plant, our Chroma produced uh, and lean free denim to make it more sustainable. And we have offered our solutions like uh, in deco flow in our uh, in the for the denim industry where they can use the any lean free in pure indigo to make their productions and to protect their workers protect aquatic lives from the impurity the aniline that is being used in the normal indigo and also with this uh, with these solutions they can save the water process time and the uh, and the final finishes better finishes on their articles Mm-hmm. So these were a few examples from my side. Uh, unfortunately, there were a lot more to be shared with the system solutions. Even you can go to the website of Artroma to look for the system solutions. You can find a lot of solutions available to support our textile industry to make it more sustainable by saving the resources and maximize the productivity. Thank you very much, Dr. Ashad. Um, if you have any questions to Dr. Ashad, please write them in the chat. And as I can see, um, Mr. Budgie and Mr. Maurer have already started replying to quite a number of questions that came in the chat to them. So maybe you can continue doing that to make sure that you get an answer right away. Um, yes, and again, uh, visit the website of Acroma as Dr. Ashad has mentioned, and we are going to ask all speakers to share a presentation with uh, the organizers, which can be shared then with the participants. So, <laughs> so and so this will be also uploaded, uploaded on, um, on, on the website we were going to share in the chat as well on the Asia Garment Hub website. So that's where we try to share the information being distributed or being shared here in the webinar. Without further ado, I want to come to the third presentation, which is entitled on our flyer, Die for Less. So we have with us Mr. Ulrich Hangsleden. He is a global business development manager of Dystar Colors Distribution GmbH in Germany. By training, he is a textile engineer with a major in textile chemistry, and he also brings 30 years of experience to the table. He joined Dystar, if I'm not mistaken, in 1995 and is currently Dystar's global business development manager with a focus on reactive and direct dyes in exhaust and CBP applications. Mr. Ulrich, the floor is yours. 15 minutes yes. if you can. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you can see my slide? My presentation? Yes. Okay. Yeah, good morning to everybody again or afternoon. And many thanks uh, to the organization committee also to give me the chance to speak to you today. On behalf of DICE, I would like to welcome you also to this short presentation. Today, I'd like to inform you about the solutions to dye textile dyes with an optimal processing and simultaneously to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions. I want to show you how you can contribute to the positive change and at the same time avoid additional costs that ultimately occur if you continue with inefficient processes. Basically, I want to show you how to reduce your carbon footprint in textile dyeing and avoid potential carbon taxes, which are already installed or planned in several countries around the world. Let's first look a bit more in detail on the carbon tax itself. Carbon taxes are charged on carbon emissions required to produce goods and or services and in the easiest form, a carbon tax covers only carbon dioxide emission. However, it can also cover other greenhouse gases. There are several initiatives already on the way to implement a taxing system to achieve lower emissions. 
as of 2019, carbon taxes have been either implemented or at least scheduled for implementation in 25 countries. 46 countries put some extra price on carbon or added emission trading schemes. The number increases, and it has to, because more than 77 countries and over 100 cities around the world, uh, around the world already committed to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. The textile industry is a global industry. If certain areas in the world implement carbon taxes or emission trading schemes, while others do not, this leads to competitive disadvantages and danger that production moves to other parts of the world where taxes are lower or not existent. What are the global greenhouse gas emissions of the apparel and footwear industry? According to McKinsey research, fashion makes a sizable contribution to climate change. The study shows that the sector was responsible for almost 2.1 billion metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions in 2018. This is about 4% of the global total. To set that in context, the fashion industry emits about the same quantity of greenhouse gases per year as the entire economies of France, Germany and the United Kingdom together. So which processes in the apparel value chain generate the most emissions? The majority of emissions comes from upstream activities, which are displayed here on the uh, diagram in blue color. McKinsey estimates that approximately 60% of the emission savings are possible. This could be achieved by an increased use of renewable energies or energy through collaborative efforts supported by brands and retailers and by changes in the consumer behavior. Wet processing, which includes pre-treatment, dyeing, washing and drying of textile, accounts for almost 15%. The potential to save emission in this sector alone is consequently around 360 million tons of carbon dioxide. However, despite efforts to reduce emissions, the industry is on a trajectory that will exceed the 1.5 degree pathways to mitigate climate change set out by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and ratified in the 2015 Paris Agreement. To reach this pathway, Fashion would need to cut the greenhouse gas emissions by half until 2030. But growth calculation shows that the industry is actually set to overshoot its target by almost twofold unless it adopts additional abatement actions. With this presentation, I want to focus on the part where we at Dystar and other responsible chemistry companies can contribute to collaboration with brands and retailers and their suppliers. Greenhouse gas emissions are emitted by each of us. Carbon dioxide is emitted every time when any kind of energy is generated based on fossil fuels. First target should be to avoid consumption of energy. It means turn off each energy consumer which you don't need. It's just a matter of getting used to turning off the light when you leave the room. Unfortunately, it's not always possible to avoid energy consumption, but a reduction can be achieved in most cases. In case of wet processing, it is an area where DISA can support and give guidance. Research and development also plays an important role in this game. Development of products which require less energy are needed. An example are our products recommended for Kadira Reactive. Kadira Reactive is an exhaust dyeing process for reactive dyes carried out at 50 degrees instead of 60 degrees and where the wash off is of hydrolyzed dyes is carried out at 60 degrees only instead of boiling temperature. These kind of actions do not increase the cost of production. Exactly the opposite is the case. Avoidance and reduction of energy consumption, as well as the use of less energy consuming products and processes can help to reduce the cost. What else? Coal need to be eliminated in manufacturing. Coal as a thermal energy source for material and product manufacturing is a nightmare for carbon footprint. Better earlier than later, we have to shift to 100% renewable energy. Means that electricity based on solar, wind, water, biomass, or the geothermal energy should be preferred. And also, the material efficiency need to be maximized. That means that through design, material selection, and methods of manufacturing, the amount of fiber and material which go to waste in each stage of production is reduced. 
On this slide, we also mentioned the offset of emissions. Offset of emissions is just a compensation of emissions. Compensation is understood to be payments to finance investments that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. For example, investments into wind turbines in developing countries. But always give the avoidance of greenhouse gas emissions priority over offsetting them. If we take a look to the dying process, we can influence the resource efficiency by dye selection, auxiliary selection, and process selection. Of course, also, the selection of the best suitable dyeing machine has a strong influence. Especially woven fabric can be dyed on HDB machines, on Jigger, in cold per batch processes, or in various numbers of full continuous processes. In most cases, the decision is made based on fabric construction and batch size, but in many cases, just on the availability of machines. With the right dye selection, just from the beginning, in terms of dyeing performance, eco-compliance and fastness profile, you can optimize the transfer lab to bulk and reduce the risk of reproduction and rejections. In case of reactive dyeing on cellulosic fibers, some auxiliaries can help to improve level dyeing performance, especially in torquoise or brilliant green shades. Other auxiliaries improve the wash-off performance of idolized reactive dyes. The use of such products support a better ride for time rate and help to shorten the processes. Many roads lead to Rome, and there's not only one dyeing process, but knowing details about substrate and fabric construction, metamerism required fastnesses and available machines, an optimized process can be defined in almost all cases. The problem is that in most cases, that most dye houses are always under time pressure. And therefore, standard procedures are used, which are reliable, but often also quite long in process time and high in resource consumption. Many years ago, DICE developed so-called OptiDi programs. These computer programs, which are nowadays integrated in our online tool, Elliot, can be used free of charge. OptiDi was developed to optimize dyeing processes, optimize dyeing recipes, or to show where possible problems are to be expected. At present, DICER offers OptiDye programs for cellulose dyeing, uh, dyeing in exhaust and cold per batch, a program for polyester in exhaust, one for polyamide in exhaust, and another one for cellulose dyeing with our distinctive inantrine dyes by using wet dyeing in exhaust or continuous process. With support of these unique programs, shorter and optimized dyeing cycles will be calculated, which lead to lower operation costs and improved quality uh, of the dyed articles. In most cases, it will also lead to better transfer of the recipes from lab to bulk, but also from bulk to bulk, and it reduces the number of dye additions. And also, OptiDye will contribute to overall improvement of right first time performance. Seven years ago, DICER started with the Kadira concept. Kadira is a new module in DICER's resource efficiency program. The Kadira concept considerably reduced water, waste, and energy consumption. It also will help brands and retail and their production partners to save valuable resources and to reduce the carbon footprint of the textile goods. The first Kadira module was the Kadira Reactive, a concept to save resources during reactive dyeing of cotton in exhaust process. The meaning of Kadira is carbon dioxide reduction. And in summary, it's a concept to save in general the valuable resources that are commonly used in the textile processing. Since 2015, we have developed in total 11 individual Kadira modules for cotton, wool, polyester, polyamide, as well as for fiber blends and denim including also laundry of denim. All of them contribute to reduce the carbon footprint of the textile industry. Let's have a quick look on the saving potential of the various Kadira modules without going in the detail of this process. Kadira Reactive is a concept for exhaust dyeing of cotton with reactive dyes. With selected dyes, dyeing temperature can be decreased and together with an efficient wash-off procedure, it can reduce the consumption of water by 28%, electricity by 22% and steam by 31%. To give another example, let's take a look to Kadira polyester, 
when combining pretreatment together with the dyeing process in one bath and optimize the heating rate as well as integrating the reductive clearing at the end of the dye bath, Kadira Polyessa provides a reduction of water consumption of 50%, electricity by 43%, and steam by 46%. All these different Cadira modules contribute to saving of minimum 30 to 50 percent of water, 20 to 50 percent electricity, and 25 to 50 percent of steam. It should not be concealed that not all articles in all colors can be produced with Cadira concept on all machines. The success of Cadira concept depends on whether you are willing to invest some work and whether you really want to change something. On this slide, you see a comparison of conventional dyeing on 100% polyester material versus Cadira polyester concept. This comparison was made for medium to dark shade. The diagram in red represents the standard process and the dyeing uh, of dyeing polyester and the green one uh, represents the Cadira polyester concept. It is easy to notice that Cadira polyester concept can provide significant saving in terms of resources. We can take, for example, water consumption, which can be reduced by 48% by adapting Cadira polyester concept and other resources such as electricity and steam consumption can also definitely be saved. So saving of resources, it will be by consequence result in CO2 emission reduction. If we calculate the reduction of carbon dioxide for 1 million garments, the emission is reduced by 75 metric tons. And this is equivalent uh, to carbon dioxide emission of a diesel car being driven for 450,000 kilometers or similar to drive approximately 11 times around the globe. On this slide, you see a comparison of conventional reactive dyeing on 100% cotton with Cadira reactive process. This comparison was made for medium shade. The red curve represents the standard process and the green curve, the reactive uh, Kadira reactive process. What you see immediately is that Kadira reactive process consume less dying time. You can also see that it only need five instead of seven bases. That alone makes a saving of 28% in water and wastewater. For the shorter process time, the machine requires less energy. That also is a saving of 23%. Cadira dyeing is carried out at 50 degrees and the wash off at only 60 degrees. That means a saving in steam consumption of 45%. Besides resource saving in percentage, we can also calculate the saving of carbon, to carbon dioxide emission. Assuming that steam and electricity are generated on basis of coal, the saving per kilogram dyed fabric is 1.124 kilogram carbon dioxide. If you calculate the reduction of carbon dioxide for 1 million garments, the emission is reduced by 140.5 metric tons. To say with the example of the diesel car, in order to emit 140.5 tons of carbon dioxide, you have to drive around 840,000 kilometers with this car. This is almost 21 times around the world. Let's have a quick look through the biggest fiber blend polyester cellulose, or in this case, polyester cotton. This comparison was done for black shade. When combining the advantages of Cadira polyester with an improved reactive dyeing process, the water consumption can be reduced by around 20%. This optimized process design leads to saving in electricity and steam consumption, a total saving of 0.78 kilogram carbon dioxide per kilogram dyed fabric sounds not too much. But if you calculate again for 1 million garments made from this fabric, there are 97.5 metric tons of carbon dioxide saved. Coming back to diesel car, 97.5 metric tons equals with 585,000 kilometers or 14.6 times around the world. Oh, I skipped one slide, yes. <laughs> At the end of this short presentation, I'd like to thank you for your participation and hope it was beneficial for you. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us when you have any further question or you need advice. We are committed for, to sustainability and hope we can support you in the future, not only when it comes to reduce of carbon emissions, but also in any other topic that falls in our expertise. Yeah, thank you all. 
and best wishes for the week. Stay safe. Thank you very much, Ulrich Hangsleden from Deista. And um, again, I see questions in the chat. Um, given the time to make sure that we address some of them already, maybe uh, our representatives from the different organizations can have a look and maybe answer the easy ones already. And so looking at the time, we invited one colleague representing the factory, the users of these green chemistries, and we have with us Mr. Newton Paul. He's the Assistant General Manager of GMS Composite Knitting Industry in Bangladesh, and he has been working for at least 15 years in the field of dyeing, washing and finishing in some reputed textile composites. So I would like to hand over for 10 minutes to him to, and he's going to share some perspectives on using green chemicals in processing. So, Mr. Newton Paul, please. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Yast. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. And especially thanks to JJ for giving me the opportunity to present here. And I would like to share my experience on green chemistry with all of you now. Firstly, why we need use green chemistry? in textile. We expect to prevent environment or protect environment and we expect to reduce carbon emission. We expect to ensure health and safety environment in production area and to reduce or eliminate the use or generation of hazardous substances and to prevent information of hazardous waste and also ensuring acceptable quality of the final product and also ensuring the longevity of the final product and overall benefit like by saving time, water, energy, and also increasing production to optimize the capacity utilization. And firstly, currently I'm using green chemicals in different production area, like there are some field, by scouring process, multifunctional detergent, diverse neutral enzyme, salt substitute, polyreactive, dye soda substitute, cone neutralizing soaping agent, Dying without alkali, especially for avoid topping, uh, low temperature soaping agent, low temperature scouring agent, elimination of reduction cleaning by sustainable chemical, PFCP water replant chemical using green acid, and also some technique in garment dyeing like or washing, natural dye in garment dyeing, ozone wash technique, nebo dye, laser wash, PP alternative, and PP alternative neutralizer. And when I use this, uh, Green chemicals, some difficulties arises and also some advantage we found. And there is some brief here shortly. In bioscoring process, we especially eliminate the hazardous chemical like bleaching, caustic, and carcide also. And the problem is there the limitation comes when we do not do the pale or light color with this type of chemical. Go for dark and medium shades. And also the problem comes the absorbency. If the functional finishing is required, we do not do this. Uh, so to improve the uh, area need to be there. And the other thing is sometimes the fabric quality or surface like a uh, vintage look comes. So some brand or buyer accepted and some buyer did not accept. So this is the slight limitation also there. And then go to the multifunctional detergent. And we do, with the help of multifunctional detergent, we use uh, reduce the casting and peroxide like 50 percent less. So the hazardous chemical discharge is also less, but the problem is like some critical and deep uh, like Turkish colors quality is not up to the mark yet. Slightly a running shed comes sometimes, so need to be worked there. And another is now in uh, most trend is the dye bath neutral enzyme. You know, previously we use uh, acid enzyme, so the acid enzyme bath is eliminated by dye bath neutral enzyme with dyeing together. But the question is there sometimes the fabric quality is not up to the mark. Some dead fiber, immune fiber will remain in the fabric. So some brand is like it did accept it and some did not like it. This is the challenge for using this chemical. And also there, there is the dosing of this enzyme and the price is very high compared to the acid enzyme. And now and we all use some cases like polyreactive dyes in modern dyes. So using this type of dyes, actually the resource is saving, like saves water energy, like 30 to 40 percent. So the carbon implant discharge will be less. But the problem comes the costing. Yeah, you know the price is very high, like 100 percent more than the 
conventional reactive dyes. So sometimes we face uh, the problem for production people to how increase the dyeing cost. Now go to the another new technology like low temperature scouring agent and soaping agent also here. Yeah. Uh, with the helping previously we dye those scouring in 100 temperature like 98, 110. Now by the help of this chemical we do scouring and bleaching in 80 degrees Celsius temperature. So this is great. But the problem sometimes comes the low temperature bleaching the posting is slightly high. And now that nowadays we also replace the reduction clearing, you know, in polyester dyeing or uh, blend dyeing, polyester blend dyeing. So eliminate caustic and peroxide with the new developed chemical. So that is good for us. And now then uh, we also develop like some wash of like cone neutralizing soaping agent. Cone neutralizing soaping agent means we do soaping in one bath. Uh, after dyeing of reactive dye, do not need neutralizing or acid bath. Eliminate this bath, go with this soaping agent. So this is cost saving, but some part of you when we posting this slightly high due to the previous conventional soaping agent. And also you know in using green acid in different dyeing and washing area, we use this acid for neutralize and pH control. But the problem is slightly overdosing is required using green acid and the price is slightly high than the conventional acid. Now in natural dye is very much good for the planet and green thinking, but we natural dyes are 100% biodegradable. I tried for garment over dye also, but the supplier provide and the develop comes, but the result is not satisfactory level, like fastness is very poor and the cost is very much high. And sometimes this will uh, fix shed dyes, like uh, you go with 10 or 12 shed from supplier, so brand does not go through the, this. And I need to rework with this issue. If brand and the supplier and we also together work, this is a good, good forecast for the future. If we go with natural, then this is fully green and sustainable issue. And like in washing, we go with ozonose technique. The ozonose technique, we use the oxygen from air and this is all around us. us. It also chemical saving, water saving, wash cycle saving. So we eliminate the bleaching process, you know, in indigo dyes and bad dyes. So this is very much sustainable process, but the problem is slightly there is the initial investment cost is slightly high. And the other thing is the quality of bleach wash and the ozone was slightly different. Sometimes some brand did not like this washed look. So this is the limitation for production point of view. Uh, if they habituated this type of slightly considerable mind, then this will be very good work ever for us for production people. Okay, slightly interrupted. And now there is another thinking is nebu dye, sustainable dye. This is a new development in washing area. For this, there is also need a nebulizing unit in the machine also. For by this using this dye, we can dye in one is to one liquor ratio. This is very, very good sustainable product also. But the problem slightly comes this, the quality slightly patches uneven come to the garments by need to accept this. So need to be improved there also. And the costing is again the higher 40 or 50 percent higher than the conventional dyes. And the test report is slightly one or two grade four than the conventional garment diet. So sometimes some buyer did accept it. Sometimes our brand or buyer did not like this. So there is the challenge and need to be improved, I think. And there is no in PP alternative, you know, potassium permanent is very hazardous chemical in washing is for environment is for health everyone. So we go with this chemical, but the problem is slightly less wash effect or less whiteness is calm sometimes. So some brand did not like this low, so say go for the previous concept. So this is the challenge for us. And also the people already need to do the same thing. See previously we do this with sodium metabisulfate, which is very hazardous chemical and replacing people already neutralizer, we can go with this chemical, but the problem is side, less effect will come. So sometimes some brand did not accept this type of year. Now we are truly some challenges of green chemistry. Overall, the challenge like high production cost, high implementation cost will come, and uncertainty about accepting acceptable final quality product. Sometimes the quality is come up to the mark, sometimes it's slightly poor. So someone accept, someone not did not accept. That is the challenge. And there is also a challenge for losing work order. When I give the production price, my production cost is slightly higher 
than the other what did not use properly green chemicals so there is the challenge also and there is sometimes we go lack of information from green chemicals also and still i think we need overcome the uh, situation by improving others development of the new area so we have some expectation from the chemical manufacturer so where we can go with full green chemicals for production people also be happy and the supplier also be happy and brand will be the happy so developing cost effective green chemical firstly think about the cost also uh, cost is very challenging in the world now you know everyone so and another thing is the focus of final product quality like the final product quality will be good very good or the previous or the conventional world comparable and the another thing is user friendly green chemicals and we always develop the friendly like when you use the chemicals should be acceptable by the floor management people so every area every people where they are using that should be thing and the another thing is more innovation regarding process efficiency if you go with green chemical the process will be efficiency will be increased like production will be increased capacity will be more then production will be more happy and they will be more interested to use this type of uh, new green technology and we also some expectation from the brand and consumer point of view like brand and consumer will promoting factor is those who are using green chemicals most that should be a opportunity and the factory people will be more interested regarding green chemicals also and considering slightly higher cost of green chemicals they will pay more for the green mm. chemical user factory and the another thing is sometimes we production people will always face like the uh, some quality or shade or color will be accepted by one brand and this type of same tolerance will be rejected by the another brand so if you go with the uh, spectrometer you know in digital shade passing medium shade passing quality parameter with optimum level so there will be a pass range will be high so the reduce of pre process correction shading will be reduced to the in the production area and that will be very helpful for everyone for environment for production people and everywhere in chemical reduce everything and and another question is the raising awareness among quality control and consumer and everyone about the green product how green product will give the opportunity to everyone to create a green world so need to be thinking regarding this issue so everyone will be interested give the tolerance that will be a good thing and set new standard in ethical trading ethical trading means everything in green we will think about the uh, honest way and sometimes we give the feedback with less profit but this is green okay everyone doing less profit go with this this mindset will be in everyone point of view hopefully there will be a good thinking and lastly thank you very much for your patience thank you mr newton can you keep your powerpoint um uh, visible and can you go yeah. back two slides to the challenges so yeah. first of all there are some colleagues here um who ask questions to our presenters Thank you so much, Mr. Newton, for sharing yeah. also the the user side. And you asked some very interesting questions here, or yeah. uh, uh, not questions, only um, describing some challenges for the you are you are foreseeing. And instead of uh, now trying to to answer some questions, we have questions already in the chat, and the colleagues have tried to answer them as much as possible. But I would like to ask, uh, give every uh, um, yeah, manufacturer of green chemicals a chance to take one and a half for two minutes uh, maybe addressing a little bit these challenges here and tell us again uh, their perspective on what they see here yes and yes, yes. so um, maybe just leave it on for another 30 seconds one minute and then uh, I will go through the order of uh, appearance uh, the, the two colleagues from CHD can respond then Dr. Asha from Akroma and then uh, Mr. Ulrich from Daista if this is okay for everybody so that we have literally a one and a half two minute um, final uh, final reflection on what you are seeing here and what also what the questions uh, were in the in the um, chat I think that's more more effective and more more useful so um, Christian Baji or Klaus Dieter Maurer um, when you see here these challenges uh, anything you would like to respond to maybe we can just take a slide now away I think you you have probably take note of these challenges and so that we can see I'll you enlarged it. so yeah, leave it okay, okay. so if you okay then leave it so um leave it. christian or klaus 
Any so, vision? yeah, please, Klaus. Yeah, maybe I say also something. Um, just to the high product cost, I think uh, we can also speak for not only for us, also for the other suppliers, because considering all that labels like uh, ZDHC, GOTS, or, or REACH, or all that things, it limits us in development. It creates a lot of costs. So at the end, we have to earn some money. That's why also some costs are increasing. Then, uh, you know, already uh, the, the Corona situation uh, affects a lot of the costs. Containers raises up up to 10 times more. So this cost affecting all of us, all of, of the suppliers. And uh, this is a very critical point. And for sure, to develop also in the direction of green chemistry, it's additional cost. And the guarantee to, to get the, the money back from the market is also very difficult. So this is one point. So. I don't know, maybe uh, Christian or Mr. Hangsleden from Dijkstra can also add something to this point. <laughs> yes, uh, maybe some short words about high production costs. So if you look into uh, procedures like uh, this energy, energy saving procedures, some of the customers are just focusing on a single product, but at the end of the day, you should calculate the full procedure and this gives you some feedback of uh, and saving of the total process. So this should be uh, kept in mind, definitely, if you look about these uh, procedures. So uh, mm -hmm. uncertainty of uh, achieving acceptable final product quality. So this I cannot accept because if we implement any procedure in production, this will be assured by our technicians that these are pro reproducible. For, that's, uh, for that, we have our technical service in giving the support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially... uh, definitely. We will see this from Agroma and, and Dystar as well. So I think there is uh, the question should be answered with this. So ask us, we give you the full support of this. So and lack of information about green chemicals. It's also uh, depending uh, how you how you get your informations because we as CHT giving some informations to brands, we giving some trainings to customers. So all mm. these kind of information should be, let's say, given to uh, the manufacturer sites. And definitely yeah, yeah. Uh, informations are available. If you go to the websites of the companies, you can get a huge amount of information about the screen solutions and uh, information about it. And uh, so last Newton point, Paul, just, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to just say Mr. Newton Paul is itching to respond, but I will ask, give him the final minute uh, after the other colleagues yeah. have also shared. So Christian, one last comment and then Ashad and yes. then. One last comment is still no alternative available. So if you look in our chemical world, we really tried hard to substitute uh, the very dangerous chemicals. And if you look at uh, the history of REACH and uh, all restrictions on chemicals, we really tried hard to optimize our chemistry to uh, the demands of the market. And uh, there are many uh, alternatives available in, in, in our opinion. You just have to ask for that and we offering this regularly in the, in the visits. So that's from yeah. my point. Thanks, Klaus Dieter and Christian. Um, Dr. Ashad, anything you would like yeah. to add or stress or highlight differently? Yeah, sure. Uh, we definitely agree with all these challenges what are being highlighted here. And I think this is one of the reasons that Arcroma offer the Arcroma wave to a sustainable world. Instead of offering a one single product that should be more green or more sustainable, we are offering a, a full solution. That full solution that makes sure that the whole the process for dyeing uh, any, uh, any uh, substrate becomes economical, mm. becomes more sustainable, and end of the day, it's also a performance. He can meet even some in some cases. We optimize the final performance of the article as well. So the Alcoma bed. Uh, in this way, we also offering uh, like earth colors. If, if one of the uh, bio based available, uh, bio based dyes available for the markets. Similarly, on a sustainable way, we are optimizing the pro products already available. Uh, just like uh, and lean free our indigo process. So definitely we can say 100% things are not green, but if we compare today's processes and the products available to, to, for the industry, uh, compared to the history like a 10 to 20 years back, so there's far, far more improvement right now. Things are available there and all the stakeholders, I think are combining working towards in the same direction. And so far we have achieved and we will continue to work on this direction to achieve our optimum levels here. Yeah. 
Thank you, Dr. Ashad. And and Ulrich, I saw you also nodding nodding a lot, but I'm sure you have some special points to highlight. I have to agree. I have to agree. Yes, there there are. If you develop new products, the costs are higher in the beginning, of course, because you start with a small scale production and then you have to grow. But before you go out with a new product, you have to pay a lot of money for the reach registration, for chemical uh, law, and all these things. Uh, that is true, but I also agree that even if the product cost is higher as a single product with an advanced process, if you calculate the full process cost in many, many cases, you are at least on the same level as before. Yeah, uh, yeah and all these RSLs and eco standards that makes our life difficult because it's not solved, the problem is not solved by just giving out a green product. You also have technical requirements, and both need to be fulfilled. Of course, all the ISLs eco standard need to be fulfilled, but brands and retailer require always the best fastness performance and uh, reproducibility mm -hmm. and brilliancy and and and. Yeah, it's not easy, but we work on that. We still invest in research and development, and I think also in future we will come out with. Uh, products, not only dyes, but also auxiliaries, which fulfill the new requirements. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Paul, I, 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 promised, I promised you a minute. Can yeah. you respond yeah. one minute? Yeah. yeah. The, the overall situation is this. So, implementing and production goes is slightly high. Everyone knows. So, if we together, like in brand and manufacturer, we product manufacturer, and the chemical manufacturer sit together and sit together and expect it from all to give slightly more pay attention regarding the green chemicals so slightly higher cost so everyone will be paid slightly more and the profit margin on everyone in every perspective will be slightly less than the other green chemicals other without green chemicals so it will be a very helpful for the all and another thing you know the, the mr arkumar will say the they have bio-based art color. We also do that do the, this type of shipment also from some buyer, but the price is slightly high. That is the question. <laughs> Again, from my end, we already do a shipment and the, the price is slightly higher. So the uh, the production margin or the profit margin is very less. So I think about and uh, uh, yes, it is improving. And nowadays, I already show you a lot of uh, green chemistry, green chemical we are using production people. That is a good thing. After 10 or 15 years before, we do not think about this type of chemical. So this is good, all come. And in future, it will be more and more and more. And if the alternative green chemicals will come for two or three suppliers, so it will be very helpful for us to go one or mm -hmm. two others. They are, so they are in now just one alternative chemical for one supplier, not others. If one alternative chemical comes from CST same or our Dystar or Huntsman or others, so they will be more competitive and they will be more useful from production people also. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Newton Paul. And I know we could now continue the conversation much more, and I, I think it would be very yeah. interesting. It becomes actually a panel, but unfortunately, we have only four minutes left. First of yeah. all, uh, again, we will ask our three presenters and kudos to them once again, CHT, Acroma, and Dystar colleagues uh, for sharing today. And we will ask them to share a PowerPoint version we are uh, able to share to the wider audience as a PDF file, of course. Also, the, we will make available on Asia Garment Hub uh, the video of this session. Uh, we also try to follow up if there are any questions we haven't answered yet, and maybe our colleagues can help us to have them answered. Um, nevertheless, um, first of all, one small group picture, so we can take it right away. So done. And um, with all the speakers. And um, there is in the chat a link to a Mentimeter. We invite everybody and uh, we would highly, highly, highly appreciate if you give us feedback on the session because this is uh, supported by the German uh, Development Corporation, implemented by GIZ. So there is a link to a Mentimeter. So if you can just give us your 30 second feedback on a ranking from one to five. Having said that, there, I will ask Dr. Gun, uh, Dr. Gundolf, uh, Mr. Gundolf, right, um, honorary PhD right away. Um, Mr. Gundolf, 
to give us uh, maybe a final two minute reflection on what you have heard and learned from today's webinar. That was he's uh, was asked to be the sounding board as well. So Gundolf, you listened very carefully to all the arguments and presentations. So what is your key takeaway for today? Yeah, thank you very much. So after the first three presentation, I thought everything is there. Um, nothing to worry about as was quite impressive to see the potential for the saving. But uh, Mr. Newton also presented that is of course not that easy. But if we consider of course the advantages, the benefits by using green chemistry and also the challenges and um, that brings of course what we always see and I, uh, we got to prove again today, it's very much important as a producer know your facility well. Means knowing all the processes and because there's no process which is a standalone process. Everything is interlinked with each other. We see the potential for saving of water. We see the potential for saving of energy yeah, and the greenhouse gas emissions. And then if you want to go or then is a need to you have to make your own um, individual calculation. Yeah, we saw also sometimes a range of potential for saving between 20 to 40 percent and then you can make the individual calculation and to see really how much is the potential for you as a manufacturer. I think that is very much important really to understand what are you doing, what is your output and what is how is your facility look looks like. <clears throat> and then of course um, I think one point is very much important to consider which quite often is not so much on the agenda. Everybody at the moment is speaking, you know, also the brands focusing very much on the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. And today we have seen that um, also considering explicitly the saving of energy, that using green chemistry can contribute substantially to the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. And that I think it's also um, very much important just to consider that and yeah, maybe this just as the key takeaways, um, know your facility, make your own calculation and consider that going for green chemistry will really contribute substantially to be more sustainable, reducing the harm to the environment, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, saving water bodies, um, reducing the pollution, etc. I think that is very much important. And if you as a producer consider all that, and not only on a short run, also on the mid and long term, will give you a lot of arguments to maybe bear the higher cost per kilogram for greener chemicals because you are more attractive to the market. You can, uh, you're more attractive to buyer to brands if you have improved your production and of course incorporate all costs which are interlinked um, from the or going back to all the different processes and i just posted one link in the chat maybe you have seen to the ermc that's one of our training materials developed from gr that um, it's i think one of the mo training materials which is uh, more comp most comprehensive training materials available at the market it's a safe learning course is free of charge available in different languages anyone who is interested can just register on the e-learning training part platform Atingi, looking for the ERMC training course. And I'm looking very much forward to the next week then when we have the third webinar. Thank you very yes, much. So maybe you want to. OK, so I can you see that? I'm not sure. So what can be done to catalyze? Um, I hope I'm not sure this is, looks weird. So um, next week, same place, what can be done to catalyze? We're going to continue the conversation and and talk more about these challenges and these expectations. Uh, Newton Paul has highlighted here in his presentation and what Gundolf also addressed a little bit. Thanks again to all our presenters, Mr. Christian Baggi, accompanied by Klaus-Dieter Maurer from CHT, Dr. Ashut Mehmud from Akroma Pakistan and Mr. Ulrich Angstleden from Deister. Thanks also to the organizing team and Mr. Gundolf Klein from GIZ. Um, please, one more time, be remind, reminded if you have a minute for us. We hope so. There is a link several times uh, shared in the chat 
to Mentimeter. It takes really, I promise, 30 seconds, one minute max to, to uh, give us feedback. We would like to have high numbers of people telling us if you are satisfied with our webinar series. And hopefully we see many of you next week, same place, same time. I think different link, but uh, you already registered. Uh, um, if you haven't registered or you know people who haven't registered, please do so. And uh, we continue the conversation next week on Tuesday, different times, depending where you are. So that's it from us. I, uh, Mr. Ajman, who is our technical facilitator, anything you would like to add, Mr. Ajman? Anything I forgot? No, actually, Hello, uh, the, the link is already there. Um, uh, the link is available yeah. at Asia Garment Hub, so anyone can join from there for the next oh, webinar. Okay, w wonderful. So once again, thank you very much for taking the time. And yeah, maybe the same thank word you. as Mr. Ulrich. Stay safe, stay yeah, healthy, and see you all next week. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a great day. Have a good day. Thank care. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.